Hello, it's Mark from Oblitify and welcome back to Doki Doki New Eyes. So, last time we're off we just met the new character called Hanako. So, let's continue. Hold on. Okay. What a weird encounter. But what she said. What kind of school does she go to? And most importantly, how can I show my weaknesses so easily? But she's not wrong. I'm just permanently hurting my body for my own enjoyment. Okay, excuse me. Although, isn't life about enjoying things? This is bothering me too much. Why would such a random encounter happen at a such a time? I should be spending time with others. Maybe Monica's worrying about me. Maybe she came looking for me. I quickly climbed the stairs to the club room. Before I even walk up the last step, I hear a voice in front of me. So how was it? I quickly look up to see Monica staring at me. I kinda thought it was Monica. Sorry. How was it? You were talking to a girl, is that right? So Monica was wondering where I was. Oh, I just bumped into her, nothing more. We talked for a few minutes. How do you know about that? I haven't seen you when we were talking. Oh, that. It's just... I was testing a little. Oh. New character files. Important data. Oh. Okay, <laughs> this took a... Oh. I was just trying something. What? Monica, it makes no sense. Do you believe in supernatural things, Yuri? Sometimes, yes. But why are you asking these questions? You're being scary, Monica. I can't quite understand what she wants to say. I just want to go back to the club room. I try walking past her, but she doesn't let me. What if I told you you're not real? Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me? What if I told you this isn't reality? This is merely a predetermined world created by a superior entity. Would you believe me? I laughed a little. How am I supposed to react? Um, Monica? Are you alright? What do you mean you're testing a little? Hanako wasn't real. How do you know her name? What do you mean, Monica? The situation makes no sense. She heavily sighs. Of course. I should have expected this. Expected what? You're worrying me. Did anything happen to the club room in the club room? Sorry, Yuri. Sorry about what? Oh, reloading the game. Oh, my back hurts. Just what? I quizzically look around me, trying to understand the reason for my presence here. Did I really fall asleep on the stairs? I slowly lift up my sleeve. The cuts are still there. Oh gee, Monica, ooh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I passed out shortly after Sayori found me. I couldn't even apologize to her in the end. I feel like I'm omitting, omitting something. I know something's wrong, but I can't seem to find out what it is. I struggle to get back on my feet. My legs are asleep, just how long I had stayed in this position. I check the time on my phone. Maybe Sayori's back in the club. I walk down the rest of the stairs and I head for the club room. Before entering the room, I peeked inside. It seems like Natsuki and Maki are still having their chat. Monica's waiting at the table, at the table just like earlier. 
However, Sari is not there. I'd like to go and find her, but I believe it wouldn't be such a great idea. If I end up bothering her, like she did with me, no, I'll just wait for her here. I enter the club room without making noise. This time, Monica immediately notices me. She waits for me to sit at the table across of her. Where, where were you, Yuri? I've been searching for you, but I couldn't find you. Oh, I was out to breathe a little. Oh, is that so? Still feeling a little jealous? She says that, this last sentence with a little grin on her face, clearly teasing me. I don't think the feeling I have had was jealousy this time, though. Haha, <laughs> that must be it. I guess. Hmm, I see. Well, if you need anything, come see me. I'm just waiting for Sire to come back before we start sharing poems. By the way, she leans in closer and whispers, Please refrain from sharing your poems with Sayori. Huh? I suspect that she's re really not confident about hers, and it would probably make her feel bad. Ooh. So that's why in rain clouds, they didn't share any of poems to her. Ooh. <laughs> so please. I take a few seconds to absorb Monica's words. In a normal situation, I would believe that sharing poems could be a good way for her to express herself. But if Monica tells me this isn't a good that it isn't a good idea, on top of that, what I see this morning was definitely real. Judging by the hurt look on her face early today at the river, it's clear that wound she had was done to herself. I sigh. I totally understand. I'm counting on you to make her feel more at ease then. Of course. As the club president, it is my duty to take care of such issues. I'll stop bothering you. Feel free to get back to your reading. She gets up from her seat and leaves me alone at the table. I can't help but worry about Sayori. It seems like I'm not alone thinking about it. Yeah, that, that's right. I'm sure Monica will take care of her in a proper manner. I shake my head and grab my book in my bag. Huh. I notice a few blood stains on the cover. The book looks a little worn. Did I fall somewhere? I don't recall reading my book while I was out there. Or did I? I can't remember much. I guess I should be think about sleeping on my bed someday. I probably sleep a little better. I open my book again and start eagerly reading the passage I had to stop at before leaving the room. The club door opens. Sayori enters in her arms a cardboard box. Oh, so that's where she went. She was probably looking for supplies. For the festival, maybe? Monica immediately greets her. They talk for a little while, and Sari chuckles a few times. She hands Mon Monica the cardboard box. As she does so, I notice how she tries to keep her arm bent. Does it hurt? Or maybe she's just trying to hide it as much as possible. I notice her glancing at Marky. I do the same. It looks like he's done talking to Natsuki. She has a satisfied look in her face as she watches Marky put a book in his bag. She, pro she probably lent him another manga. Before Sayori gets the chance to sit down, Monica coughs and raises her voice to get our attention. I close my book and I put it back in my bag. Okay everyone, are you ready to share your bones? I shiver as soon as I hear the last sentence. I'm going to have to share the poem I wrote this morning. What if someone really understands what I meant in it? Monica would be able to understand the meaning behind it. What would she think? And what if Natsuki understands? She would definitely judge my little hobby. That's how she's about things. I grab the poem I wrote in my bag and I lay it on the table. Without even looking at him, 
I know where Mark is headed. Natsuki are already expectantly looking at him, waiting to share a poem. Sari once again next to him, listening while pretending she's not there. I can't understand why she wants to stay near Marky. Yuri! Huh? I turn my head left. Monica's sitting next to me, staring at me with a funny expression. I've been calling you a few times, but you haven't answered. Too busy looking at the little lovebirds. I quizzically look at Monica. Lovebirds? <laughs> Just kidding, Yuri. Don't worry. These two are sure growing close, don't you think? I nervously tap the table with my index finger. Indeed. You don't sound too confident, though. Did you finally make up with Natsuki yesterday? Oh, of course we did. She almost stayed at my house, too. Oh, really? That's great. How did it actually... She couldn't stay. It's complicated. But she was most likely grounded by her father. He called her while she was at my place. Monica's expression is suddenly darkens. Oh. You meant the father wasn't aware that she was at your place? Exactly. She said she'd call him a little later. Hmm. You should avoid doing that. It's not my business, but you know, just avoid it. I'm sure I completely understand what Monica's saying. Her expression clearly shows that she's worried about something though. Uh, yes, of course. I don't think she'd like to come back to my place anyway. We haven't really talked much this morning. She shrugs. Don't bother. There may be meant be circumstances that make this situation a little delicate. 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 Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I know what for. <laughs> Just make sure you support her with, well, everything. She chuckles a little. Oh. <laughs> Including how close she gets to our new member. My heart sinks as I hear her mention this. Of course I'll support her. It will probably mean I won't be able to get closer to him. But if it means Natsuki can be happy, and most importantly, if it means I can still be friends with her. It's a small price to pay. I promise I'll take care of Natsuki. Good. Not that I had doubts in the first place, though. You're all so responsible, Yuri. Haha. <laughs> I'm not too sure if that's true. Maybe you don't see it, but I do. You're always down to earth, calm and thoughtful. She looks behind her. It looks like Natsuki's raising her voice. Suddenly, darts out of, she darts. She suddenly darts out of the room, clutching her stomach. Seems like something happened. I'll share my poem with you a little later, Yuri. Oh, I'm one of the reader poem. She goes towards Maki, probably to ask him what went wrong with Natsuki. I can't help but look at the exit. Judging by the way she was clutching her stomach, she was headed to the bathroom. I get up from my seat. Everyone's busy with the current situation, so they won't notice me leaving the room. I can't leave Natsuki alone like that. I swore I'd support her. Before I even get to the bathroom, I hear Natsuki coughing. Sounds like she really doesn't feel good. I enter the bathroom after knocking on the door. Natsuki? It feels weird. Just yesterday, Natsuki was the one entering this room looking for me. I guess this is how I pay her back. I hear some more cough coughing coming from one of the stalls. The door is locked. I knocked on it a few times. Natsuki, are you alright? Leave me alone, Yuri! Those words hurt me more than they should have. Natsuki would never talk to me like this. Moreover, in such a context. I can understand if something went wrong, Natsuki. You were there for me yesterday, right? I nervously laugh. 
And you're supposed to be my role model too, remember? Natsuki doesn't laugh. I hear a sigh on the other side of the door. I don't think... I don't think I should be your role model anymore. What? Why? How? Why would Natsuki say something like that? No. No. Is it because of Maki? Did he do something wrong? Or is it my fault? I'm sorry. Was I too clingy? Clingy? Annoying? Stop it, Yuri. Let's just... Let's just talk later, alright? As of now... What? Her sen sentence interrupted by a sudden coughing. She really doesn't sound good. What am I supposed to do in this situation? She could be... Maybe because, um, her father's pretty abusive to her. Maybe she doesn't have... She doesn't eat, I guess? Or... Something? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, I'm gonna save on this one. <laughs> okay. I think we should go with... Show her I'm here for her, because... Yes... Yeah, I think that's what she would do. Alright. I don't care if Natsuki doesn't want to be my role model anymore. Even if it was merely a joke. I'd be her role model. It doesn't matter what she's feeling. I'm supposed to be her friend, right? I sit on the other side of the store, resting my head on the door. Natsuki. I can't even remember how long ago we met. What I can remember, though, is that you've always been there for me. So let me be there for you. I know I'm not really the best type of person there is. I'm always spacing out. I'm always doing everything wrong. But every time something goes wrong, you're always there for me. So, please, don't just forget about me. No matter the circumstances, even if it's about Maki, I will side with you. I think I can be, I can hear Natsuki sobbing behind the door. What is she feeling? She was so cheerful earlier. What makes you think I'd forget you? I'd never said that I would. But you, you can't understand. You can't. I can't tell you. Let's just forget it, okay? I'll be back later. Just wait for me in the club room. She's slowly breathing. If only I could do more. Alright. Hang in there, Natsuki. I get up and I head out of the bathroom. I close the door behind me. Man, Yuri and Natsuki are really good friends. Man, in in Doki Doki Literature Club, you know, you would never, never have thought that. Or well, even though it's a mod, but, you know, I would believe that. I like this mod. Natsuki isn't coughing anymore. Seems like she's feeling a little better. A sigh with relief. At least she wasn't sick or something. She's just feeling a little tired. That must be it. I enter the club room. Monica's still talking to Marky, but she has a poem in her hand. I glance at it. The writing suggests it's Marky's. As I sit down at the table, I see the club door open. Natsuki quietly enters the room, enters looking a little better than she was when she left. Her hair is wet. She's probably washed her face. Still, I don't really know what caused her so much trouble. She waits a little behind Monica, suddenly joining the conversation. She grabs the poem from Monica's hand. She didn't want her to read it. Now that makes me even more curious. I guess I'll have the occasion to see what it's about in the moment. At some point, Sari jerks her head up. It looks like she wants to be part of the discussion, but she refrains from doing so. I remember what Monica told me. She's probably not too confident, so I won't force her. 
If I talk to her, she will probably take some kind of pressure. Ah, everything is so conflicted in my head. Monica turns around and leaves the little group to sit next to me once again. She sighs. Have you noticed something different about Natsuki lately? Is she talking to me? I was focused on Marky. He's eagerly reading her poem. It looks like he's really enjoying it. So? Oh, yes, um... Well, Natsuki's always been a little like that. Like what? Like that? What do you mean? Whenever something's on her mind, her behavior changes a little. Though, I don't recall seeing her as trouble as she is today, honestly. It's a little strange. That's right. Just now, we were talking about her poem with Maki. As soon as she came back, she told it. She took it from me and she wouldn't give it back. She didn't want to give it back? How odd. She usually acts slightly different in this case, but she never acted this differently. Indeed, I tried to convince her to give it back, but she liked the poem too much. In fact, I suspected that this poem was written specifically for her. Wait, as in Marky wrote it for her? Exactly, we talked about it, but he seemed really uneasy. It wouldn't surprise me if he were trying to impress her. Natsuki's reaction was probably linked to it. I think our little baker is in love. <laughs> My heart sinks once more. In love? Love must be such a wonderful thing. But does it really have, a, have to change people? Is what Natsuki's feeling even love? It's too hard to understand. I just can't understand love. Don't be ridiculous, Monica. They've only known each other for a few days. Don't you think love can happen really quickly? A few days is more enough to like someone. I think you know that, considering... Considering what? Indeed, I've been waiting to grow closer to Marky, but does that mean... Well, yesterday you had a quite a big fight with Natsuki. And you turned to Marky when you needed help, if you recall correctly. Aren't you feeling a little something too? No. Well, no, of course not. I think I'm blushing. No, a few days is definitely isn't enough to like someone. Definitely. And after all, since he and Natsuki look so good together, I had no right to feel this way. Do you think people aren't allowed to feel? You're free to feel whatever you want, Yuri. You just have to be careful not to let it change you. Just like what Natsuki's doing right now. Oh, I understand. I'm Natsuki's friend, so it's my duty to help her. Exactly. Anyway, what are we doing here? Aren't we supposed to be sharing poems? Oh, right, poems. This talk was so interesting, I actually forgot the initial purpose of this dis our discussion. I take the poem and I left it on the table and hand it to Monica. I wrote something a little more elaborate than yesterday. Feel free to give me your feedback. She takes the poem into her hands and reads it. It feels like an eternity before she finishes it. Yeah, it was a pretty big poem. She stops looking at the poem and stares at me. You're right. This is kind of a different compared to yesterday's. It's really troubly, troubling. And this time I can't seem to find the correct meaning behind it. Unless something... Unless it's something really dark. I opened my mouth to talk, but I couldn't, can't find anything to say. I stand there for a few seconds trying to come up with a cohesive response. It's just... Well, I can see it in my head, but it's too hard to put in words. Did you at least enjoy the poem? Oh yes, of course! You really have a certain talent with words, Yuri. Your poems are mesmerizing. As soon as I started reading, I couldn't stop. You have a fascinating method of writing. 
Ah, well, thank you, Monica. I spent a long time establishing my writing style, so hearing that from you r is really heartwarming. I said that differently. <laughs> Keep up the good work. She reaches into her bag and grabbed to grab her palm, but she quickly noticed that Marky is done chatting with Natsuki. Oh, I think he's going to sh show you his palm. I'll be right back after that. Go enjoy your time with him. Indeed, Marky's walking towards me. I clench my poem a little more as he approaches. There's no reason to be so nervous. I end up staring into his eyes again. Let's see what you've written for today. He flashes me with a bright smile and he hands me his poem. I smile back. Ah, my stomach feels weird. Monica, what are you doing? Putting such thoughts into my head. I look at the poem. Alright, let's see. Nightgown, papa, parfait. Oh boy. Poof, pout, puppy, swimsuit, shopping, skipping socks. Uh, <laughs> all Natsuki things. <laughs> oh, there's no picture. Oh well. Once again, the structure feels a little off. <laughs> However, the style is clearly a little different. It's a bit better. Yeah, I think it's a bit better. There's more words, so <laughs> that's a that's a that's a good one. Yeah. The words blend in with each other, <laughs> and the idea he wants to convey is clear. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, he had an image in her, in mind while writing it. Oh yeah, definitely Natsuki. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Monica's right. This is directed at Natsuki. This is pretty good, Marky. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I have no doubts anymore. He was definitely influenced by Natsuki. I can see the same type of syntaxes she uses in her poem. Simplicity and efficiency. I was also a bit surprised by how different everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Just like that, just like I did this morning. I think writing needs to be spontaneous. Pre-scheduling poem writing isn't right. This is why I don't like preparing poems for such activities. I'd love to see how complex Marky's poems could get. Let's try, try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's very intimate mate exercise. He's merely smiling at me, but I think I lost Marky when I tried to explain he can wander through his feelings. I don't mind, though. He's particularly cute like that. Just what am I thinking? I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I shyly hold out my palm. Now, now's the moment to see what he'll think of it. That's not weird. That weird, is it? I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is that the poem you wrote for today? I silently nod, waiting for him to start reading. He gently takes the poem from my hands. Um, his movements are so grateful, graceful. He starts reading. Once again, he's taking his time. Like he's not saying anything. Am I supposed to talk now? What if I bother him while he's reading? I know how frustrating it is to be bothered. Oh, uh, oh, uh, um. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I guess this is the best I could come up with. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I can't help but smile to myself. 
It looks like he did understand the point of my poem. Only two days in and he's already starting to understand poems a little more. Impressive. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Hmm. Now I'm not too sure. Does he understand it or not? You're not supposed to ignore the face value of the poem. It's a part of it too. Writing is a combination of abstract and concrete concepts. However, he seemingly hasn't understood the real meaning of the poem. What a relief. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my m more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. My voice is barely audible by the end of my sentence. I look down. I may have said a tad too much. Marky was staring at me with such a look. I just got lost in my train of thoughts again. I slowly look up to him to see him grinning at me. Huh? That's funny. That wasn't the reaction I was expecting. Not that it bothers me, but I don't find this amusing. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being rid ridiculed for strange interests? Eh? Uh, she, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's, she's right. Natsuki? Of all the people I would have expected to her to think this way. She may be my best friend, but I know her well. I thought she'd despise my... my... my kind of hobby. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well... that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? I suddenly gasp. Uh, please don't tell her I said that. I've spoken, I've spoken my mind. Whenever he is around, I'm having a hard time separating my words from my thoughts. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. A siren relief. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. He nods and he gives me my poem back. He turns around and he goes towards Sayori, who's now smiling at him. A few seconds, Monica's already next to me, ready to share her poem. Ready to give me your opinion? Oh, sure. You look really excited about this, Monica. I know you'll give me honest feedback. I really liked it when you don't when you tell me what you think. Who is that so? Haha, <laughs> I'll gladly read it then. Monica smiles and hands me her poem. I grab it and I read it, making sure not to wrinkle Monica's beautiful sheet of paper. The colors, they won't, I mean, the, I was reading Monica's voice. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, and blue, and endless. Cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a, a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Hmm, that's not that bad. Wow. I just stand there looking at her poem for a solid minute. Even more impressive than the one I read yesterday. The words mix to create a perfect rhythm and even though the meaning of the poem is indeed a little blurry. 
I can feel something. The poem makes me feel something. It doesn't happen often, but this is truly incredible. I look at Monica and I flash her with a big smile. You're awfully good, Monica. I really can't find any flaws in your poem. I think I like it more than mine, to be honest. <laughs> no, I, I think it's any better. I don't think it's any better. Having read yours, I can guarantee you mine you mine is not nothing next to it. However, it's really flattering to hear you complimenting my poem. What did you particularly like about it? I ponder for a few seconds, trying to put my thoughts into words. There are many striking elements that can be considered considered as good. But there were two specific factors that made me like it. First, the metaphors you used in the at the end. I really enjoyed them. They're easy to picture, yet they convey so much more than their apparent simplicity. Second, the rhythm. Just like the one you wrote yesterday, I was so into it. It's like the words followed each other perfectly, if that makes any sense. It's good. Really good. Do you seriously believe that? Of course. I wouldn't lie about these things. I didn't expect it to be that good, quite honestly. So thank you. Haha, <laughs> it's no big deal. Thank you for showing it to me. I hand her the poem. Just as I do so, Natsuki comes next to us, poem in hand. Hey now, sharing poems without me? Not cool. The three of us just laugh. Of course we wouldn't forget about you. But you forgot about Sayori. No. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Show us your poem then. She proudly raises it in the air and she hands it to me. Monica looks over my shoulder, trying to read it at the same time. Oh, this is big. Wow. You know what I've heard about any any oh any like spiders. Hicky wiggly hairy ugly spiders. That's why we I'm not friends with her. Any has Amy oh Amy has a cute singing voice. I can't I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she so she sung sung the is that blurry for me? <laughs> I don't need glasses. My heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. Yeah, I didn't read it. I knew it. <laughs> Her poem is considerably longer than the one she wrote yesterday. And it's much more complex. It's hard to describe. Some kind of mix between a usual simplicity and a strong message. Marky didn't lie. The poem is also about having a weird hobby. Monica doesn't say a word. It looks like she liked the poem as well. Well, Natsuki, how can I say this? Oh, no. If you're going to criticize me again... I'm kidding. I really liked it. Actually, Marky told me my poem was very similar to yours. She winces at, as I say his name. It's much longer than yesterday's, right? Yep. See, I can use more words than you think. Indeed. Doesn't it share some elements with Maki's poem a little? Natsuki flinches once more. I'm pretty sure Monica is just testing Natsuki a little. I don't know if I should consider this funny or mean. No! He copied my style. But, let's not talk about this, alright? Come on, you know I'm just teasing you. And with all the teasing these days. 
Eh, I guess that's what friends are for. In the anyway, why don't you show me your poem, Yuri? Since apparently ours are similar, let's see how you portray this subject. I handed her poem, handed her the poem, and she takes it, almost ripping it. She's nervous. I can feel it. She reads my poem a few times. How? Pardon? How could you write about the same subject as me? What are the odds? Oh, that. Uh, I guess you are connected in some way. And about the poem itself, how was it? Well, you know, it feels a little unlike you. Unlike me? Don't tell me she's actually understood the meaning of it. Monica couldn't even understand. What do you, what do you mean exactly? Well, uh, hmm. Monica. Monica looks startled, as I, I don't think she was listening to us. Yes, what is it, Natsuki? I need your help. Something in this poem doesn't feel quite like Yuri, but I can't put my finger on it. Hmm. When we talked about it, I couldn't find the correct meaning. It mostly made me think of very dark things, honestly. Maybe this is what's bothering you. Yuri doesn't write about dark things usually. They're getting dangerously close to the main point of my, the poem. How am I supposed to justify myself? Ah, uh, I don't know. I must have read a little too much before writing. But what's important is that you enjoyed it, right? Of course. It's not my writing style, but it's well executed. Good job. Natsuki nods at me, and Monica looks in Marky's direction. Looks like these two are done sharing their poems. Sharing time is over then. Without a word, she stands up. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in front of the room. We all gather at the front of the room, staring at Monica. Marky looks a little confused. Actually, it's pretty common of Monica to ask us to gather to talk about something. Is it about the festival? Well, sort of. Before I get to speak my mind, Natsuki does it for me. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, I'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. My pleading voice isn't good enough. Isn't enough to change Monica's decision though. Her determination doesn't look doesn't change. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sari has been working on the posters I and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Natsuki and I look at each other. What a relief. It's if it's only decorations, it can only go well, right? Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard it about already. We're going to be performing. It's like my heart just stopped beating. Performing? Is this some kind of joke? No, her look says otherwise. There's no way I'm going to perform. Performing? Per um, Monica, without even listening to our concern, she takes a proud posture and breathes in before talking. Uh, yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to, going to let everyone else come out and recite poems too. Sorry, puts. Sorry, putting on all, all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, has been silent since the start of the debate. Shows us. The poster she's been working on. I didn't know she was such a good artist. 
The lines are delicate, and the coloring is well done. I smiled at her, but Natsuki doesn't seem to care at all. It looks like she's about to shout at Monica. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad I of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I shyly raised my hand. I don't want to go against Monica's will, but this is just too much for me to handle. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Just imagining being in front of a crowd. I can't. Definitely not. I shake my head in fear. Guys! Sorry, looks like she wants to say something, but Monica holds her hand up, signing her to say no more. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone and just until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. I feel guilty, seeing Monica so sad after we rejected her idea. I really, really want to do it for her. But, in, but I just can't. I know my limits. Monica doesn't look ready to give up just yet. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. And if we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it would inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Is Sayori really saying that? I mean, I shouldn't judge people before learning more about them, but she's always so silent. I wouldn't have expected her to be so poetic. What she's saying makes sense, wandering through our, our own feelings as I describe it. That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in the club today. Don't you want to share your poem with that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Uh. Natsuki remains silent, probably thinking about the pros and cons of such performance. I wish I could say something, but Monica's words resonate in my head. She's totally right. Our goal is to get more members and to share our passion for literature. Sorry it doesn't look too bothered. She's anxiously watching us, waiting for our answers. God, Monica, how can you be so convincing? I guess this is a skill she developed while participating in the debate team. Suddenly, Mark Hughes, who's been listening from afar, jumps into the conversation. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Monica's argument worked on Natsuki. That was to be expected. She never misses an occasion to share her poems. And considering how well Monica phrased them, there's no way she wouldn't have agreed. Er... Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Uh... Everybody's looking at me, expectantly. What am I supposed to do? Even Marky wants me to do it. If he does, then I guess I'll do it. 
I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. I sigh once again. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. Monica has an ex exasperated look on her face. Is it really that hard to understand how painful it is to be in front of a crowd? It's just not me. I'm not able to do it. I was born this way. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Monica needs to stop with her sudden ideas. I almost fall out of my chair. She wants us to practice now? No, no, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Monica doesn't even show an ounce of compassion. Okay. I suspect that she wants to push us against our limits in order to improv improve. It's an honorable motive, but it's just not the right time. Not while Marky is here. What if I end up making a fool of myself while reading? Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Sorry has her hand raised. She looks all fired up. I wish I could be as willing as she is. Ahaha, of course. Now let's see. She flips through her notebook, glancing all over her poems she's written. It seems like she wrote a lot before we even start sharing them. I should try bringing the ones I had at home some point. She reads one and nods. A few seconds later, she's behind the podium, ready to recite a poem. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Before she even says the first word, I can already feel the power of her poem. Just like Marky, she has a special aura. It's hard to define. She starts reciting. Her voice is clear and stable. The rhythm of her poem is extremely regular and consistent. Just like the poems she showed me. It seems like she has her own particular way of writing style, but it's not the only right it's not only a writing style. It's as if her poems were meant to be recited. I can't tell if she takes time to recite each and every one of her poems, but one thing is for sure. She's really talented. I should try getting some inspiration from her poems. Before I know it, the recitation is already over. Everyone's focused on her. We all applaud as Monica catches her breath and smiles at us. She looks really proud of herself. Actually, seeing her enjoying her time there, why can't that not be me? It's only performing in front of my friends, right? It's not going to be such a big deal if I fail. That, that was so good, Monica. Ah, uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Before Sayori even gets up from her chair, I stand over my hands raised. Uh, I'll go next. Oh, what? Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. I grab my poem from my notebook, clenching it in both of my hands. I hope Sayori's not too upset. I know she wanted to go next. But I feel like I can do it. I know I can. I look down, walking over to the podium. This poem is called... All of a sudden, they all focus on me. I wasn't expecting it to be this stressful. You can do it, Yuri! I faintly smile at Syro. I can do it. I it's called... After image... After image of a crimson eye. I clutch my poem even harder. I can take a few seconds to catch my breath, and I started reciting the poem. I keep butchering my sentences. However, it's not such a bad feeling. It actually feels pretty good. It's like nobody's here anymore. 
the words fly out of me. I can really can't really can't control it anymore. I'm already reaching the end. I want this to keep going. Who would have known it would be such an interesting experience? Everything feels calm. Ah, too bad. It's already the end. I jerk my head up to look at everyone alternatively. Wait, where? Alright, I was just reading my poem. Nobody's clapping though. They're all standing there staring at me. I... Marky is the first one to start applying. Everyone else follows. However, they all look look all more or less confused. Was my performance that awkward? I don't even remember reading my poem, to be honest. I clutched the poem once again and I hurried back to my seat. I'm pretty sure I'm blushing. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you. I mean, thank you for sharing your poem. I've seen to have exhausted all the words I could muster. I don't really feel so good. <laughs> oh man, that's like a Thanos line. Oh, <laughs> I hope nobody's seen it. I mean, I hope everyone's seen it, so... <laughs> so there's no spoilers. This was embarrassing. But... Marky applauded. He was the first. For some reason, that makes me genuinely happy. I guess I'm next then. She happily stands up and goes towards the podium. She's grinning at us. There's no way she's not feeling stressed right now. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, ahaha. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> it's obvious she's starting to get nervous. She's most likely felt the same as I did. So she wanted to try it out. But imagining it and doing it are two very different things. Sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your head. It's your poem, so you can come out the best way that way. I see, I see. Okay then. After taking a deep breath, Sayori starts reciting her poem. Her voice is all soft. She's clearly nervous, however the result is mesmerizing. I feel like that maybe she could make it sound more powerful, but if it's her first for her, it's really good. After a few sentences, it looks like she isn't paying attention to us anymore. She's enjoying the experience. I can see a faint smile on her face as she reads through the a tricky part of her poem. D did she really write it herself? I can't know, since Monica doesn't want us to make Sari feel uneasy. As soon as she finishes, we all applaud. She sighs and grins at us. I did it! Mark is the first one to congratulate her. Of course, he's her best friend after all. Good job, Sayori. Eh, <laughs> even Marky liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? <laughs> Marky is really oblivious to these compl to compliments. Before Sayori tries to explain what she meant, Monica claps alone. It came out very nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't quite worked quite as well with that kind of delivery. I think Monica spot the same flaw as I did. Sayori's delivery wasn't sure, it was interesting, but I don't feel like it would be the right one for the festival. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them. Depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a bomb that challenges a little more. 
we don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay, I'm gonna save here. Uh, just give me a second. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Isn't Monica t a little too hard on Sayori? She was clearly doing her best. Well, she's the club president after all. What she's doing is probably right. Okay! Sorry, Lazy walks back to her seat. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Maki. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Maki lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. That was mean. Is she trying to make us believe she has no specific feeling towards Maki? Somehow I have trouble believing this. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go what I wrote for today. Hmm. Maki's been incredibly tolerant with Natsuki. Well, I guess that's the normal, considering he takes place in front of the podium. He looks calm, almost confident. He's feeling awkward. He's sure he's doing a good job at hiding it. He starts reading his poem. His voice is shaky, but he pronounces every syllable distinctly with a certain style. I can see his eyes moving as he reads the poem. The light reflects in his pupils. His face is also incredibly delicate. Before I know it, his poem is already over. I haven't listened to the end. I need to stop focusing on other things. I shake my head. Sorry, I'm not as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about the lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve all the time though. Yeah, maybe. He looked disappointed in himself. It makes my heart sink to him, see him like that. I wish I could compliment him on what was actually good in his performance, but I can't bring myself to talk. Ah. I push my two st myself too hard. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. On her way to the podium, she keeps mumbling to herself. Probably saying things about Monica and her pushy attitude. She glances at Marky and immediately looks down at her poem. The poem is called... It's cold. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. She takes a deep breath. She takes a breath and starts reading. She progressively relaxes as she reads through it. Even though she sounds a little tense, she's got the same rhythm as Monica. Reading her poems and hearing them are completely different experiences. They sound so much more complex when recited it this way. I wonder how she wrote yesterday. The one she wrote yesterday would have sounded. She finishes her poem and the audience applause, just like they did for everyone else. She hurries back to her seat, her poem still in hand. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do it again. Uh, well, you do at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. At least she feels at ease with one of those. I'm pretty sure it's be even worse in front of a crowd for me. I shiver the thought of all those stares. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way round for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... 
Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much time to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you have all an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should have probably found find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. We all stay in our seats for a few minutes, looking awkwardly at each other. Suddenly, Monica stands up. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but at least try to write our poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I reassuringly smile at Monica. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. Monica sits down on a chair. I find myself sta sta starting at Marky again, once again. I think that means staring. Staring? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It looks like he's deep in thought. I think this little recitation had an impact on him, but I can tell whether it's a positive or a negative. After a while, he snaps back into reality and he stands up. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. I sense a bit of bitterness in Natsuki's voice. I think Natsuki could use Monica's jealousy talk. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make this such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Judging by Marky's expression, what I said must have been a little embarrassing for him. I look down, avoiding his gaze. I mean, walking home with him must be enjoyable. Well, uh... It's okay, Marky. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. With that, the two of them exit the room as usual. Monica and Natsuki and myself. It's funny how familiar this scene gets over time. Are you alright, Yuri? You've been fairly silent since you performed. Well, I guess I am, yes. Ah, I may have pushed you a little too far. I'm sorry if that was the guess. But you understand, right? It was already a miracle for us to get a new member, so if this event can help us, we can have we can we have to seize the opportunity. I understand. Don't worry. It's just that well my performance. Hmm? What about it? It looks like most of you were a bit confused. Was it really bad? Yuri! Of course not! We were just a little shaken, you know? I mean, you have you ever hurt yourself when you perform? Um, no, not really. That's why. Trust me, it was breathtaking. Halfway through the presentation, you started feeling noticeably at ease. It's like you were another person. Really? Yep, really. It was incredible. Don't worry, don't worry yourself over this. If you say so. A sigh with relief. So that's why. Monica looks behind her to check what Natsuki's doing. Okay, well, I'm going to end it here. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Yeah, that's right. And as always... This is a pretty long one, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Obliterify. <laughs>